people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. The Sri Lankan crisis is worsening by the day. The government has asked people to work from home in order to save fuel on commute. There have been rolling power cuts of as long as 12 to 13 hours a day. Now the entire country has been affected by the forex crisis that began and spiraled over a month back. President Rajapaksa is set to hold high-level meetings this month in order to secure a bailout. But for now, everything appears to be in jeopardy. Sri Lankans are facing drawn-out power cuts as a deepening economic crisis has roiled markets and the electricity regulator has urged more than a million government employees to work from home to save fuel. The island nation of 22 million people is struggling with rolling power cuts for up to 13 hours a day as the government is unable to make payments for fuel imports because of lack of foreign exchange. The electricity cuts affected residents and shopkeepers in Colombo, with many saying their refrigerated food had gone bad. Shop owners complained about businesses being affected with electronic machines sitting idle. The crisis has triggered a situation of unrest with people's economic options disappearing by the day. Last week, the authorities had deployed the military at gasoline stations to prevent chaos and conflicts. But even that moment appears to be a thing of distant past, but people heading towards poverty and helplessness. <laughs> The island nation is struggling to pay for essential imports of food and fuel after the 70% drop in foreign exchange reserves since January 2020 led to a currency devaluation and efforts to seek help from global lenders. The country is also turning off its street lights to save electricity as its worst economic crisis in decades brought more gloom to its main stock market, triggering a halt in trade as prices slid. <laughs> Meanwhile, Indian Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jay Shankar met with Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Different sources said that Sri Lanka has sought an additional credit line 
of $1 billion from India to import essentials. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is set to fly to Washington, D.C. this month to start talks with the International Monetary Fund, that is IMF, for a rescue plan. But for now, it appears that Sri Lankans will have to live in the dark for a longer period than they thought and the government promised. Moving on. The Pakistani political turmoil is expanding as the opposition has apparently reached in a position where it can oust Prime Minister Imran Khan from his office. The vote of no confidence has been adjourned as of now, but the troubles for Imran Khan are not over yet. Moreover, with several legislatures from Khan's own party, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf withdrawing their support from him ahead of the vote, his future appears to be hanging by a thread. The opposition had already started stepping up pressure on Khan to resign, but he has rejected calls to quit ahead of the vote to oust him. Allegations, counter-allegations and growing political turmoil. Pakistan is going through unprecedented times as the country's Prime Minister Imran Khan faces a no-confidence motion. A high-voltage drama unfolded this week after Khan, despite losing support from his own party members and allies, refused to step down. In fact, he launched his own salvo, accusing the opposition front of getting outside support in what he called a Western conspiracy to remove him from his position after he visited Russia amidst the Ukraine-Russia conflict. مجھے لوگوں نے کسی نے کہا جی وہ عمران خان آپ ریزائن کر دیں میں ریزائن کر دوں میں جو میرے ساتھ کرکٹ کھیلتے تھے وہ ساری دنیا بیس سال جو میں کھیلی ہے آخری گیند تک میں مقابلہ کرتا ہوں میں کبھی ہار زندگی میں نہیں مانی میں تو ووٹ کا جو بھی رزلٹ ہو جائے آپ دیکھیں گے کہ میں تو اس کے بعد اور زیادہ تکڑا ہو کے سامنے آؤں گا جو بھی رزلٹ ہو یہ نہ لوگوں نے آپ کو معاف کرنا ہے نہ لوگوں نے آپ کو بھولنا ہے نہ آپ کی آ, آپ کی اس بات کو معاف کرنا ہے بھولنا ہے نہ جو لوگ آپ کو ہینڈل کر رہے ہیں نہ ان کو معاف کرنا ہے اور بھولنا ہے لوگوں نے یہ ہمیشہ کے لیے لوگ یاد رکھیں گے کہ آپ نے اپنے ملک کا سودا کیا ایک بیرون ملک سازش جو یہاں لوگوں کے ساتھ مل کے ایک ایک وہ گورنمنٹ جس کی آزاد فورن پالیسی تھی اس کو گرانے کی کوشش کی گئی The vote has become increasingly difficult for Khan since he lost his majority in parliament when his main ally MQM or Mutahida Qaumi movement abandoned the governing coalition and joined the opposition. Khan this week had called for a parliament debate before any vote was put before the House. However, the deputy speaker adjourned the House till Sunday after the opposition denied participating in the debate and urged for a direct vote. جو جمہوری طریقہ ہے اس کو رسپیکٹ کرے اپنا عہدہ سے ہٹے جاتے ہوئے جاتے ہوئے اب اپنے اپنے آپ کی تھوڑا سا عزت پاکستان کے عوام کے نظر میں اپنے لیے اپنے آپ کے لیے آپ کی قائم کر سکتے Observers say the opposition has been seeking a quick vote on the floor of the House as they are apprehensive of some backdoor deals that could go against their plans. The PTI and coalition partners had 176 seats in the 342 member assembly. But on Wednesday, the Mutahida Qaumi movement said its seven lawmakers would vote with the opposition, which has a combined 163 seats. More than a dozen PTI lawmakers have also indicated they will cross the floor. Although PTI is reportedly using all means to bring them back to the fold. Although the situation is getting increasingly uncertain on the floor and PM Khan is appearing to be losing ground, his supporters among the common people expressed faith in his leadership. 
خاص صاحب عدم عدم اعتماد کی تحریک جیتے ہیں یا ہاریں مگر خاص صاحب نے عوام کے دل جیت لیے عوام خاص صاحب کے ساتھ کھڑی ہوئی ہے آج جو سارے اس ملک کے جو کرتا دھرتا تھے تیس سال سے پینتیس سال سے جن کی آگے پیچھے حکومت آتی رہی وہ سب ایک طرف ہو گئے Earlier, the no-confidence motion was submitted by the opposition parties on March 8. The opposition is confident that its motion would be carried as some allies of PTI have come out in the open against Imran Khan. A strong opposition brought about the no-confidence motion after Pakistan faced a recurring economic crisis with Khan's government banking on International Monetary Fund to release the next tranche of $6 billion rescue package to shore up dwindling foreign currency reserves. The opposition also accuses Khan of being incapable at handling domestic as well as international relations as they say Pakistan's image has only deteriorated globally since Khan assumed office. Moving on, 5th edition of Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation or BIMSTEC Summit was recently hosted virtually by Island Nation Sri Lanka. All the seven members of BIMSTEC were present in the virtual meeting which focused at the prevailing issues in member countries which need to be addressed. The regional grouping adopted a charter to expand its overall cooperation and firmed up a master plan for transport connectivity. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasized for the regional unity and cooperation. Fifth summit of BIMSTEC, the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral, Technical and Economic Cooperation was held virtually this week. With the theme, Towards a Resilient Region, Prosperous Economies and Healthy People, Sri Lanka chaired this year's summit. All seven members of the grouping discussed expanding cooperation amongst themselves and firmed up a master plan for transport connectivity. While addressing the summit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, chaired by Sri Lanka, said the region is facing challenges of health and economic security, due to which the need of the hour is unity and cooperation. PM Modi also said India would provide $1 million to the BIMSTEC Secretariat to increase its operational budget. Bharat, Sachiwalai ke operational budget ko bhaane ke liye $1 million ki vittiya sahayata dega. Excellency, हमारे आपसी व्यापार को बढ़ाने के लिए बिम्स्टेक एफटीए के प्रस्ताव पर शीघ्र प्रगति करना आवश्यक है The grouping accounts for 22% of the global population and has a combined gross domestic product of 2.5 trillion dollars PM Modi called upon fellow leaders to strive to transform Bay of Bengal into a bridge of connectivity, prosperity and security among the BIMSTEC member countries. पिछले कुछ सप्ताहों के यूरोप के डेवलपमेंट्स ने अंतर्राष्ट्रीय व्यवस्था के स्थायित्व पर प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा हो गया है। इस संदर्भ में बिम्स्टेक क्षेत्रीय सहयोग को और सक्रिय बनाना महत्वपूर्ण हो गया है हमारी क्षेत्रीय सुरक्षा को अधिक प्राथमिकता देना भी अनिवार्य हो गया है एक्सलेंसी आज हमारे बिम्स्टेक चार्टर को एडोप्ट किया जा रहा है एक संस्थागत आर्किटेक्चर की ओर हमारे प्रयासों के लिए एक महत्वपूर्ण कदम है The leaders also witnessed the signing of three BIMSTEC agreements which represent progress being achieved in ongoing cooperation activities. Meanwhile, Bhutan Prime Minister Dr. Lothai Shering thanked PM Modi for providing COVID-19 vaccines to the nation. 
BIMSTEC is a regional grouping comprising India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Nepal and Bhutan that was established in 1997. Its members lie in the littoral and adjacent areas of the Bay of Bengal, constituting a contiguous regional unity. The grouping is also seen as a replacement of the SARC, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, a South Asian grouping that has largely been lying dormant for past several years. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. South Korea's military said it had successfully test-fired a solid-fuel space rocket for the first time on March 30th, a step it says will help to eventually launch a constellation of satellites to better monitor threats such as North Korea. The launch is the first such test since South Korea and the United States agreed last year to end decades of restrictions on the South's ballistic missile and rocket development and comes less than a week after North Korea conducted its highest missile test yet. South Korea said it plans to eventually use the rocket to put a small satellite or a number of ultra-small satellites into low Earth orbit in the future and to later transfer some technology to the private sector to help revitalize the domestic space industry. A combination of spiking gas prices globally and local government rebates have driven up consumer interest in Thailand for electric vehicles. Thousands of people flocked to the Bangkok International Motor Show in March, with crowds forming at booths by auto manufacturers featuring electric cars. This year's Motor Show was the first time that government EV subsidies for consumers were introduced, while Chinese car makers are also producing cheaper models in particular to target the region. The government subsidy combined with a reduction in value-added tax could save customers up to $4,779 per unit. Domestic demand for EV is a crucial part of a larger government strategy to preserve its status as a major regional automaker. The government is targeting production of 725,000 electric vehicles a year or 30% of output by 2030. Thailand is Asia's fourth largest auto assembly hub and the industry contributes to about 10% of the economy and manufacturing jobs. The demand for EVs have been gaining momentum. Last year, the number of registered fully electric cars doubled to about 4,000. The United Nations and U.S. welcomed unilateral truce moves by Yemen's warring sides as encouraging steps while stressing the need for a more comprehensive ceasefire that would help alleviate a dire humanitarian crisis. Both the U.S. and U.N. have been pressing Riyadh to ease coalition sea and air restrictions on areas held by the Houthis, who ousted the Saudi-backed government from the capital Sana in late 2014, prompting the coalition to intervene months later. They also urged the Houthis to end an offensive in energy-producing Marib, the internationally recognized government's last stronghold in North Yemen. A permanent ceasefire has proved elusive as both sides resisted compromise. The Houthis warned the coalition to lift its blockade ahead of any true stocks while the alliance which controls Yemen's seas and airspace wants a simultaneous deal. Riyadh has struggled to exit the conflict that is largely seen as a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The Houthis say they are fighting a corrupt system and foreign aggression. Thousands of Israeli mourners gathered this week for the burial of two Israelis who were killed in a Palestinian shooting attack near Tel Aviv. Israeli security forces were on high alert after a Palestinian gunman killed five people in a Tel Aviv suburb on March 29, 
the latest in a string of fatal attacks that has stoked fears of wide escalation. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett said Israel was facing a new wave of terrorism and called a security cabinet meeting as police beefed up their presence in Israeli cities. The shootings in Nebrak, a Jewish ultra-Orthodox city, raised to 11 the number of people killed by Arab attackers in Israel over the past week. It was the sharpest spike in attacks on city streets in years, raising again for Israelis a familiar sense of insecurity. Moving on. Kashi Vishwanath Corridor in Varanasi has benefited several religious spots in the holy city including Sri Samrajeshwar Pashupatinath Temple which is also known as Nepali Temple. Hundreds of devotees visit the temple and offer prayers. Sri Samrajeshwar Pashupatinath Temple has helped bring Indians and Nepalese come closer. The two countries share a unique relationship characterized by deep-rooted people-to-people contacts of kinship and culture. Let's take a look. Sri Samrajeswar Pashupati Nath Temple in India's holy city of Varanasi has stood the test of time and now stands even taller with the revamped Kashi Vishwanath Corridor. Varanasi is said to be the oldest existing city and is one of the most important pilgrimages for Hindus. The massive corridor around the famous Kashi Vishwanath temple, which opened last December, has given a boost to tourism in the holy city. Since the inauguration of the first phase of the Kashi Vishwanath project, devotees have begun to come in large numbers, and one no longer has to crane one's neck to see the famous temples. The project has benefited several religious spots, including the famous Sri Sam Rajeshwar Pashupati Nath Mahadev Mandir. It is also known as the Nepali Mandir and Mini Khajuraho. Nepali Pashupati Nath Mandir है और लोग जो नेपाल में पशुपति नाथ मंदिर दर्शन करने जाते हैं तो यहाँ काशी ही नहीं पूरे हिंदुस्तान और नेपाल के लोग जब काशी आते हैं तो विश्वनाथ धाम दर्शन करते हैं तो यहाँ इस नेपाली पशु इसको नेपाली मंदिर के नाम से बोला जाता है काशी में तो नेपाली पशुपति नाथ मंदिर में अवश्य दर्शन करते हैं अभी तीन बजे के बाद मंदिर खुलेगा तो यहाँ रेला लग जाएगा लंबी लाइन यहाँ से लेकर के घाट तक लगती है Dedicated to Hindu Lord Shiva, this temple has great religious importance. Constructed in the 19th century AD by the King of Nepal, the temple is a replica of the Pashupati Nath Temple in Kathmandu. People from the Himalayan nation hold great reverence for the temple and a large number of them visit the holy site every year. Nepali temple is a bond between two countries with similar cultures and religions. A major attraction among art enthusiasts the temple stands with pride today. ये पशुपति नाथ महादेव मंदिर जो नेपाल में आपको दिखाई पड़ेगा सेम वही चीज बनारस में देव के देव महादेव काशी विश्वनाथ बाबा की नगरी में जो मंदिर बना हुआ है काशी विश्वनाथ जो धाम कारीडोर मंदिर के जस्ट बगल में ललिता घाट के पास में पशुपति नाथ महादेव मंदिर बना हुआ है ये इतनी भव्यता इतनी सुंदरता जो काष्ट कला आपको बाहर दिखाई पड़ेगा वो आप इस मंदिर में आके मतलब इतनी अच्छी दृश्य कि आपको आने से यहाँ सब कुछ संतुष्टि मिलती है The Kashi Vishwanath Temple Corridor has made Varanasi a delightful place of interest for pilgrims across India and Nepal. Earlier, the temple area was only 3,000 square feet, which has now been enlarged to about 500,000 square feet. Now, 50,000 to 75,000 devotees can visit the temple and temple premises. The corridor, which combines history with the future, is helping in bringing both the neighboring countries closer, which share a unique relationship characterized by deep-rooted people-to-people contacts of kinship and culture. Apart from infrastructural cooperation, the two sides have also been working on enhancing cooperation at cultural front. 
With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.